Hi everyone, this is Sean with the Western Mass team of the Mass Support Network, here with your COVID-19 update for Friday, October 2nd, 2020. Cases uh, continue to rise. Uh, worldwide, we saw another 2.1 million, uh, which is an increase of 100,000 over the rate of increase last week. Uh, to, last week, we saw 2 million new cases. This week, we saw 2,100,000 new COVID cases across the world. In the United States, uh, we saw a similar, uh, a steady rate of increase, what we saw last week with about 300,000 new cases. And here in Massachusetts, uh, we are seeing a uh, uptick in cases uh, with uh, about 3,900 new cases in the last week. Uh, in terms of deaths, uh, worldwide, uh, death rate uh, has uh, spiked in the last couple of days, up to 40,000 in the last week. Uh, and here in the US, the death rate is holding steady at about 5,000 people per week. Uh, Massachusetts, we saw 120 people die in the last week of COVID-19, uh, which is slightly more uh, than it's been in the past. But uh, again, our death rates are fairly low, so one bad week will seem like a large spike. So that's not sure yet if that's indicative. Uh, so looking at trends across the country here, uh, testing uh, has dipped slightly uh, from its highs uh, earlier in the week and last week. Uh, and case counts are rising uh, following our brief plateau there. Hospitalizations are also on the rise after our almost all-time low. Uh, and uh, death rates are uh, declining slightly, holding steady. It's uh, kind of on that, that cusp where it's maybe slightly declining there. Uh, so looking uh, across the states, see where uh, the effects are happening right now. Uh, these are the uh, raw numbers of cases per state. Uh, right now, uh, the, uh, this is just the number of cases uh, yesterday, uh, not uh, accumulative totals or uh, cases by 100,000 or um, seven day averages or anything like that, but this does kind of give you a snapshot of where things are currently spiking. Uh, by population, the biggest cluster is uh, in the upper Midwest there, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, especially Wisconsin. Uh, you know, they're seeing uh, like 17,000 cases in the last week. Uh, and that's one of our major hotspots right now, both in terms of population and in terms of raw numbers. Uh, California and Texas are still putting out more uh, cases uh, per day, but those are obviously much larger states, and the Dakotas uh, have higher cases per population, but those are much smaller, and thus the, the, the amount per population is much higher, but Wisconsin is kind of the, the big spot right now. Uh, with hospitalizations uh, trending up, uh, this is a chart showing uh, how hospitalizations are changing across the country. Uh, so on the right, you can see the hospitalization totals uh, and uh, how we reached that low point uh, in mid-June. Uh, then we had, of course, the July surges, everything upticked, and then we've been steadily going down, and now we are starting to increase again. So when you look at the left, you can see how each state's uh, hospitalizations, their total hospitalizations has changed uh, in the last month uh, with uh, significant increases, especially in the upper Midwest there. Um, many cases, places like California, Texas, and Florida, which were especially hard hit uh, in the late summer are now trending downwards. Uh, but a lot of us in the Northeast as well are trending upwards uh, because we have had a fairly uh, good summer and now we're starting to see more cases come in. Uh, so our numbers are rising up here in the Northeast uh, by percentage especially, where we've got fairly low, so even a big, uh, even a smaller uh, bump will increase those percentages rather, rather a lot, uh, Connecticut, for example. All right, so let's look at developments uh, with, of course, uh, the big one to lead off that the president has tested positive for COVID-19. Now, uh, setting aside all uh, politics, anything uh, for, I guess, the, the president, uh, the Republican Party, or his administration, uh, there are uh, massive amounts of public health implications for the president being COVID-19 positive. Uh, so, uh, you know, first of all, there may be a uh, 
super spreading event in the White House, uh, among White House staff, among reporters at press briefings. Uh, we don't know the extent of which uh, COVID-19 has spread within the halls of government there. So there's a very uh, serious possibility of many people being infected uh, in that area if it got all the way to the president, uh, which has implications for uh, just national governments in the coming weeks, uh, the number of uh, officials and staff members who uh, may be sickened, uh, as well as a uh, possibility for broader uh, outbreaks in a city as interconnected as Washington, D.C. Um, so uh, this you know, may have uh, further implications. Uh, also, uh, there are uh, going to be some uh, implications for how uh, public health, uh, how the president's uh, illness uh, is how that uh, conveys to the general American public. Uh, it's possible that uh, the president uh, being sickened by COVID-19 uh, may bring a sense of reality to many places that uh, have not really grappled with the virus fully at this point. Uh, and uh, my hope is that would make a lot of people uh, start uh, implementing more uh, public health measures when they see that this could even affect the president. Uh, so uh, we will see uh, how that develops uh, as it goes on. Uh, there was a large uh, contact tracing study released from uh, India recently with uh, looking at over 87,000 cases and over 600,000 contacts of those cases. Uh, and uh, that uh, has uh, put out a lot of interesting data uh, that we can look at now about how COVID spreads. Uh, first of all, one of the biggest uh, takeaways from the study was that uh, children do spread the virus, definitely do spread the virus. However, uh, the virus tended to spread mostly in age groups. Uh, children were more likely to spread it to other children. Uh, and this is one of those things that makes sense. We think of people tend to hang out with people in their age groups, but there was more lateral transfer between people of an age rather than transfer between family members. However, that does still happen. There is still the risk, of course, of uh, someone younger infecting their older and more, uh, more at risk relatives. Also, very importantly, uh, it seemed about 71% of people did not pass on the virus to anyone else. This is a more and more growing evidence that shows that the virus is really spread by super spreading events, not just single individual person to person transfer like the flu is. Uh, so this is uh, something with really big implications uh, that has some, uh, suggests some possible directions for uh, containing spread going forward. Uh, how focusing on super spreading events over uh, individual Transfer, uh, transmission uh, may be a more effective strategy. Uh, and also, uh, interestingly, uh, it showed some very uh, strong cultural differences in patterns of death. Um, uh, in India, actually, uh, while death rates increased with age, after age 65, uh, the death rates declined, whereas here in the US, that's when they start to spike. And uh, it's thought to be because actually in India, the uh, life expectancy is uh, 69. Uh, now, life expectancy is a very misleading uh, statistic. It doesn't mean people tend to die after 69. It's uh, an average with uh, deaths for younger people. So anyone who, the, the implication is thought to be that people in India who live past 65 are generally uh, wealthier and in better health and have better access to health care. So people who are in that age bracket uh, are more likely to have the resources necessary to survive. Um, as compared to where we have a lot more people in that age bracket in the United States and a lot more of them are poorer, uh, so we see differences there. Uh, another difference there as well was that uh, the average length of time in a hospital between admission and death was about five days uh, where, uh, in India, where in the US it's closer to two weeks and that just talks a lot about uh, the, the health conditions there. Uh, now this was, study was only conducted in two states in India, so uh, there is uh, possibilities that, um, that there could be some uh, state variants between uh, different Indian states. India is of course a massive country, so we should expect there to be uh, some differences across it. Uh, uh, many of the uh, scientists and journalists who uh, were reviewing this uh, study uh, who were Indian themselves uh, reported that there are many more poor country uh, states in India, uh, which are likely much uh, going to have much worse outcomes than there. Right. 
And uh, for the stats and trends we looked at today, uh, the COVID tracking project uh, does all the graphs, uh, get the updated uh, numbers for the world and US case counts from the New York Times, and uh, mass.gov has Massachusetts stats and trends. For more of the Mass Support Network, you can find us on our website or on social media. Remember, wear your mask, wash your hands, and we'll be here if you need us. Stay safe.